Hey friends, it's Laurie. Today I'm sharing a new Easter wreath DIY along with six of my favorite spring and Easter wreaths. I used mostly Dollar Tree supplies and as always, I hope you enjoy them. So let's get busy. Getting started, I'm using one of the 14 inch wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. They usually come in dark green, but every once in a while I find them in this pretty gold color. I'm wrapping the form and I'm using two inch burlap from burlapfabric.com. I'm placing some hot glue on the wire supports and attaching down the end of the burlap. Now that I have it in place, I'm starting to wrap the burlap around the form. As I'm adding it, I'm adding a little hot glue here and there to help hold it in place. I like to cut shorter strips of the burlap. It just makes it so much easier as you're wrapping it around. I love making my wreaths out of different textures and supplies and today I'm using the high quality burlap from burlapfabric.com. I've used their products in the past for several of my DIY projects. They not only offer different styles and sizes and colors of burlap, they also sell fabric, lace ribbon and twine and if you're planning a rustic wedding, they even have supplies for that. With that complete, for my wreath, I'm using their six inch yellow, white, and purple burlap. These are all made in the USA, and I will have the burlapfabric.com company linked below in my description. I'm making 18 ruffles for my wreath, so I'm cutting six eight inch pieces of the yellow, the white, and the purple burlap. To tie off my ruffles, I'm using some of the Dollar Tree twine. I'm cutting 18 pieces at 10 inches each. To make my ruffle, I'm beginning at one end of the burlap. From the bottom, I'm gathering the fabric between my two fingers and walking my way up to the top. Because I'm a righty, I transfer the ruffle into my left hand, wrap the jute around the center, and tie it into a knot on the back. Now that my six yellow are complete, I'm following the same instructions for the white. And now to finish up, I'm making six ruffles in the purple burlap. As always, these are the colors that I chose for my wreath, but you can always change them up and this design would work for other seasons too. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking on that little red subscribe button below, leaving me a thumbs up, and to all my returning friends, you know I'm always so happy to see you. With all my ruffles complete, it's now time to add them to the wreath. Before I permanently attach them in place, I like to find their spacing first, and I'm starting with the white, the purple, and then the yellow burlap. As I'm adding them, I'm trying to keep equal spacing between each ruffle. And this is the bonus of finding their placement first before permanently attaching them. This way you can go back and just kind of move them around. Now that I'm happy with their placement, I'm using my hot glue gun and I'm attaching the ruffles to the form and to each other. As I'm adding the hot glue, I am holding the ruffles in place for a couple of seconds to give it a chance to set up. This wreath was so quick and easy to make. I'm definitely going to be trying it again in different colors. I continued working my way around the wreath until all the ruffles were attached. Now 
To decorate my wreath, I'm cutting some leaves off of this bunch of daisies that I had on hand, but you can use any type of leaves for this project. I'm using 18 of these leaves along with this six pack of carrots from the Dollar Tree. Just like the burlap, I'm first finding their placement on my wreath. I'm adding two leaves, one on each end and then one in the center, and then I'm placing down the carrot. As I'm adding them, I'm making sure to evenly space them around my wreath. And because I'll be adding a sign in the center, I'm making sure to keep them on the outer edges of the ruffles. Now that I have them all in place, I'm once again using my glue gun to attach them. I'm using these leaves because I had them on hand, but I think you could add on some ivy and that would look really pretty too. Now that the greenery and the carrots are attached to the wreath, I'm going to be adding on some accent bows. I have two half rolls of Easter ribbon from the Dollar Tree and neither one is enough to make six bows, so I'm going to be making three bows out of each. My two ribbons are similar, but you can use the same ribbon, different ribbons, and all I'm doing is giving myself about two, two to three inch tails, and then just making a simple bow. Adding the bows onto the carrots is super easy. I placed a dot of hot glue just under the green toppers and attached them in place. Even though my bows look similar, I alternated them as I worked my way around the wreath. I'm accenting each of my carrots using one of these sparkly eggs from the Dollar Tree. And before I attach them, I'm removing the little hangers. Once again, I'm using my glue gun. I'm adding a different colored egg to the outside end of each carrot. As I'm attaching them, I'm making sure all the eggs are heading in the same direction as the carrots. For the center of my wreath, I'm adding this cute bunny hop sign and I picked this up at the Dollar Tree. You can always use it as is, but I'm gonna change mine up just a little bit. I'm using this Easter headband from the Dollar Tree and I'm removing both of the ears. I'm adding some hot glue to the bottom of each and then folding them over. I removed the hanger from my sign. I'm adding some hot glue to the ears and attaching the bunny ears high enough to cover those hanger holes. I'm adding a bow to my sign and I'm using this pretty two and a half inch Easter egg ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm giving myself about five inch tails on each end and I'm just making a simple bow. When I'm done, I'm dovetailing the ends, which is super easy. You just fold the ribbon in half and cut away the ends at an angle. To attach it, I'm placing some hot glue onto the bunny's ears and placing down the bow. The bunny's tail looks just a bit small to me, so I'm removing it and attaching an everyday cotton ball. And once again, I attached it in place with my glue gun. I centered my bunny hop sign on the wreath and I'm attaching it in place with my glue gun. You can always add a piece of wire onto the back as the hanger. I'm just using the wreath form as mine. Now that it's complete, this pretty Easter bunny hop wreath is ready to hang.
Getting started, I'm using an 18 inch grapevine wreath that I picked up at Michael's. My largest flower on the wreath will be this bunch of purple variegated lilies from the Dollar Tree. I'm keeping the leaves with my flowers and using my clippers, I'm cutting about a three to four inch stem. Now that each of my flowers are on single stems, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and evenly space them around the center of the wreath. When you're done, stand back and take a look and make sure that you're happy with their placement. I'm adding two bunches of the Dollar Tree Pink Hydrangeas and once again, I'm keeping the leaves and I'm cutting the stems at about three to four inches in length. I have 12 bunches and I'm adding the first six in between each of the lilies on the outside. I'm not measuring each one, I'm just using my best judgment and sliding them into place. I'm then placing my next six on the inside and once again between each of the lilies. I wanted to add a pop of a deeper, richer color, so I'm using these dark magenta roses from the Dollar Tree. Once again, I pushed the leaves up near the flowers and I cut about a four inch stem. To add these roses to my wreath, I'm placing one in the center in between each of the lilies. Once I have my flowers attached, I'm then going to use my glue gun and give each stem a dot of hot glue to help hold them in place. The next set of flowers that I'm adding are these pretty blue wildflowers and they're from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm using two bunches and what I really like about these are the leaves. They make a perfect filler so I didn't have to buy any extra greenery. This time I'm cutting the flowers away from the leaves and I'm going to be saving the leaves to use at the end of my project. Now that I have them all cut, I have 12 little sprigs of the blue flowers and I'm going to add them to the wreath, placing one on the outside and then one on the inside and continue this pattern as I work around my wreath and as I'm working my way around, I'm spacing my flowers out as evenly as possible. In addition to the blue wildflowers, I'm also going to be adding one stem of white wildflowers. These two came from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be snipping the flowers away and hanging on to those leaves to use at a later time. I only have six stems of the white flowers and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of randomly placing them around the wreath here and there, but I'm making sure that they're evenly spaced. This is pretty much my style of how I make a wreath, but you know, everybody makes theirs a little different. To complement the variegated purple lilies, I'm adding in two stems of this pretty Dollar Tree lavender. I kept the flowers and the leaves together and cut them into separate stems. There were 10 in all and I tucked these around the outside where I saw some empty space, once again making sure that I was evenly spacing them as I worked my way around the wreath. Then to add a bit of balance, I then tucked three of them around the center. It has been so cold here in the Northeast and making this wreath is really getting me excited for spring. As the last accent for my wreath and to add a bright pop of color, I'm adding in these pretty yellow Forsythia flowers and these I actually had on hand. 
but the Dollar Tree also has some, so you can pick them up there as well. I've removed them from the main stems and I'm randomly placing them here and there and I'm filling in any of the open spaces on the wreath. And once again, I'm making sure that I'm placing them evenly around the wreath to give it a nice balanced appearance. These are the colors that I chose to make my wreath and I think this bright pop of yellow is really what brought it to life but you know you can choose any colors you like and I think it would look just as pretty. Now that I have all my beautiful flowers added to my wreath, I'm once again going to use my glue gun and tack all the new additions down into place. I'm going to be adding a sign to my wreath, similar to one that I made in a past video, and I'll have that linked below in case you'd like to check it out. To start my sign, I'm using two of the six inch wooden pallets from the Dollar Tree. I removed the labels from the back and I'm attaching the pallets together using my Starbond thick glue. This is my go-to glue for all my unfinished wood pieces. It sets up within minutes and if you'd like to check it out, I have the company uh, along with a coupon code link below in my description. To attach my pallets, I just added some glue to each end and I pressed them together. Now that my two pieces have set up and they're attached, I'm going to use my white acrylic paint and give it a coat. I'm choosing to paint my sign white, but you know, you can choose any color at all that will complement your wreath. While my base is drying, I'm going to be using one of these Dollar Tree welcome words and they usually come in an assorted three pack. I'm using my pink acrylic paint and I'm going to end up giving it three coats. Because it's made of metal and the pink was a bit light, I think that's why it needed that extra third coat. Now that both of my pieces are dry, my welcome word and my base, I'm going to use my E6000 to attach them together. I placed a generous amount on the back of my welcome. And when I was done, I then centered it on my white base. When my sign was dry and completely set up, I gave it a coat of satin Mod Podge. It not only gave my sign a bit of a shine, but it also helped protect to keep the paint from scraping off of the word welcome. Now that my sign is dry, attaching it to the wreath is super easy. I found the center point of my wreath and I tucked it in and under any of the flowers. I then used my glue gun, added a generous amount of hot glue, and attached both sides into place. Now with my sign attached and in place, Remember the greenery that we saved from the wildflowers? We're now going to add that to the wreath. Unlike before when I was evenly spacing my flowers around the wreath, I'm just taking the greenery and I'm tucking it in here and there anywhere that I'm seeing an open space. I just continued working my way around the wreath and I'm adding the greenery into all those little nooks and crannies. Once I had used all my greenery and it was in place, I then used my glue gun to attach the stems to the grapevine wreath. The final accent that I'm going to be adding on to my spring wreath is this pretty yellow butterfly that I found at the Dollar Tree. 
I removed it from the package and added some hot glue onto the back. I then attached it at an angle onto my sign. With my butterfly in place and to finish up, I just worked my way around the wreath and gave all the flowers a good fluffing. When I was done, my Dollar Tree Welcome Spring Wreath is ready to hang and let me tell you, spring can't come soon enough for me. I'm starting my wreath by using one of the 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath forms. I'm also using three of these fabric table runners from the Dollar Tree and I found mine in this pretty green color. To attach them all together you'll need 24 chenille stems and this was the closest green I could find at the Dollar Tree to match my table runners. To get started, I'm attaching two chenille stems per outer section and I'm evenly spacing them and then twisting them into place. I'm wrapping them around the inside and the outside rails. As I'm attaching them, I'm just kind of eyeballing their placement and they don't have to be exactly perfect. Close enough will definitely work. Now that I have them all in place and to help keep them from moving, I'm using my glue gun and placing a dot of hot glue under each of the twists. To make it easier to attach the center stems, I'm just flattening my outside stems. To add my center chenille stems, I'm placing one around a support, twisting it into place, then my next one, the inside and the center rail, making sure to center it between the two outside stems. And from there, I just continue the pattern, adding a stem around the support, and then centering one in between my two outside stems. When I'm done to help hold my center chenille stems in place, I'm once again using my glue gun and just placing a dot of hot glue under each twist. To attach the table runners to my form, I removed all the packaging and they each come with two pointed ends. I'm gathering about three to four inches on one of the pointed ends. I'm then placing the fabric between one of the outside chenille stems and twisting it into place. When I'm done, I'm then tucking the point of the fabric underneath the wire support. I'm now gathering about five inches of fabric or so, making sure that the two sides are tucked under, and then I'm making a little poof. Where I have the fabric gathered together, I'm now attaching it to the next set of chenille stems and twisting that into place. And now making sure that the two sides are underneath, I'm just fluffing it open. I'm now gathering my next five or so inches of fabric and attaching that to the next set of chenille stems. I'm not measuring my fabric as I go. I'm pretty much just keeping all of the poofs about the same size and when the wreath is completed they all sort of blend together so you won't notice if they're a little off here or there. 
From here, I'm just continuing to add my fabric until I come to the end of the table runner. When the last section of fabric is added, I'm then tucking the pointed end under the form. To add my next table runner, I'm once again gathering the pointed end and where I have it gathered, I'm adding that to the last set of chenille stems where I had twisted the last end of my table runner. And then I just tucked the pointed end underneath the support. And once again, from there, I just continued gathering my fabric and working my way around. When I'm finishing up the outside of my wreath, I'm now attaching the last poof of fabric to the first set of chenille stems so I make a complete circle. With that done, I'm continuing on with my fabric and now all I'm doing is adding it to the next chenille stem that I had added in the center. And as I'm continuing to add the fabric, I'm always making sure that the two sides are tucked under. And by doing this, we're starting to complete the inside of the wreath. When I'm done, I'm once again tucking that pointed end under the form. And then to add the next table runner, I'm following the exact same instructions as when I added the second. I'm using these pretty green table runners for my Easter wreath. And I also use some of the Dollar Tree's other table runners to make a Valentine, a ladybug, and a patriotic gnome wreath along with several others and I'll be sharing the ladybug wreath here and you can check out the other wreaths on my playlist. I'll have that linked below in my description. And now with my wreath complete, I'm just finishing up by tucking that last pointed end under the form. Now that I have my wreath complete, I'm just going around and I'm just kind of fluffing up the fabric. To hide all those chenille stems that are sticking up, I'm just folding them over and twisting them together under the form. I'm adding some sparkly sheer Dollar Tree ribbon as an accent onto my wreath. I picked up a blue, a pink, a purple, and I'm using some white that I had on hand. I'm adding eight ribbon bunches to my wreath, so I'm cutting eight 10 inch ribbon strips from each roll. Now that I have all my ribbons cut, I'm going to dovetail each of the ends. This is super easy. All you need to do is fold the ribbon in half and then cut away the end at an angle. Now that I have all my ribbons cut, I'm going to turn them into bunches. I'll be attaching them together and I'm using some 12 inch floral wire that I'm cutting in half. To stack my ribbons, I'm using a blue, a white, a pink, and a purple. I'm folding them in half to find the center and then giving it a little pinch and attaching it together with my floral wire. I'm making four of these and then I'm going to make four with the purple, the white, the pink, and this time the blue will be on the bottom. These are the ribbons that I chose and the order of my colors, but you know, you can use any ribbons that you'd like and just make this project your own. To attach my ribbons to the wreath, I'm just placing them over the fabric and then twisting them together on the back. 
I'm starting with my purple ribbons on top and I'm adding my second directly across from my first. I'm then adding my next one on the side and then my fourth ribbon directly across from that one. With those four bunches of ribbons in place, I'm now adding my next four. And once again, I'm placing them across from each other and trying to evenly space them around the wreath. Now that I have them all in place, I'm just kind of fluffing them out a bit. For the backing of my wreath, I'm using one of the pizza pans from the Dollar Tree. For the graphic inside my wreath, I'm using the month of April from this Dollar Tree 2022 calendar. To attach the graphic, I'm using the back side of the pizza pan. I centered the bunny on top, and now I'm just adding some hot glue and attaching the four corners. I then used my scissors to trim off the excess paper. To attach my bunny, I added some hot glue to the outside of my wreath. I then placed the pan on top, making sure it was centered. To add the egg accent onto my wreath, I'm using two packages of these Dollar Tree Easter eggs. I'm using eight of them and I chose the blue, the yellow, the pink, and the purple. Attaching them is super easy. I'm just adding some hot glue to the center of my ribbon and placing in the egg. As I'm adding them, I'm keeping the pattern of blue, yellow, purple, and pink. Along with the Easter eggs, I'm also adding in a floral accent, and I'm using these pretty pink, yellow, blue, and purple flowers from the Dollar Tree. I removed two stems from each, and I'm attaching them to my wreath with my glue gun. I added a dot of hot glue onto the fabric in between each of the eggs and then attached my flowers. And as I added them, I did offset the colors of the flowers against the colors of the eggs. Now that they're all in place, my sleeping bunny Easter egg wreath is ready to hang. Getting started, I'm using one of the 14 inch wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. I'm also using 12 of their white chenille stems, but you can use any color that you'd like. To attach the mesh, I'm first placing one chenille stem around the wire support on the form and twisting it into place. And after my first one is attached, I'm then attaching five more. With all those in place, I'm now attaching my last six chenille stems. I'm wrapping one around the inside and middle wires, centering it on the form, and then just twisting it into place. I then continued working my way around until I had all the chenille stems attached.
to prevent them from moving. I'm just using my glue gun and placing a dot of hot glue under each. For the base of my wreath, I'm using three rolls of 10 inch mesh, black, white, and yellow. You can pick these up just about anywhere, but I'll be linking the site below where I found mine. I'm measuring and cutting eight 20 inch pieces out of all three colors. I'm going to roll my mesh into ruffles and I'm just using some assorted clips to attach them. I placed my scissors on one end of the mesh to hold it in place. I then rolled the opposite end of the mesh about three to four times. Then used my clip to hold it in place. Once again, I rolled my mesh about three to four times and then walked it up to the first ruffle. I then pinched both pieces together and attached them with the clip. For the white piece of mesh, I then once again followed the exact same instructions, rolled the end about three to four times, turned it around and rolled the other end about three to four times and then walked it up to meet the first ruffle. I then clipped the two ends together. With my black and my white ruffle complete, I then followed the same instructions for the yellow. To attach them to the wreath form, I'm now placing the black, the white, and the yellow ruffle into the palm of my hand. I'm now taking the bunch and I'm attaching it to one of the outer chenille stems and then I twisted it into place. I'm continuing on making my ruffles and I'm alternating the white on the top and then the yellow on the top. This is just personal preference because honestly, once you have the wreath all put together, you truly can't tell what color is where. So once again, I'm placing the ruffles into my hand and I'm attaching them onto the outside of the wreath and then I'm alternating to the inside. So I'm just working my way around, filling the outside, the inside, the outside, the inside until the wreath is completely full. As I'm twisting on the ruffles, I'm folding over any of the excess chenille stems. Now that my wreath is full with my eight ruffle bunches, I'm just going to kind of work it around and fluff it up a bit. I'm adding eight four ribbon clusters on my wreath as accents. They're all wired ribbon and I'm adding a two and a half inch yellow with black polka dots along with the Dollar Tree Buffalo Check ribbon a pretty daisy and bumblebee burlap ribbon, and a one and a half inch ribbon that's burlap with bumblebees. I purchased these on the same site as the mesh and I'll have that linked below in my description. I'm cutting eight ribbons from each of the two and a half inch spools and I'm measuring them at 13 inches. Now that I'm done, I'm going to dovetail their ends and this is super easy. You just fold the ribbon in half and cut away the end at an angle. I also made another bumblebee wreath that you can come on back and check out after you watch the playlist. Now that I'm done, I'm going to be using my bow maker and for all my friends that were asking, I had picked this up on Amazon. To make my smaller bee bow, I'm giving myself two seven inch tails and two three and a half inch loops. I then added a clip to the center of the bow to hold it together. I'm placing my three ribbons together, the buffalo check and then the daisy burlap. I'm folding them in half to find my center and then giving them a little pinch together. I'm then placing my bee bow over the center. I'm then using a piece of floral wire. I'm placing it over the center of the bow and the ribbons and then twisting them together tightly. When I was done, I then dovetailed the two smaller ribbon ends. 
I then gave it a little fluffing. I made four ribbon bunches with the buffalo check in the middle. And now I'm making another bee bow with my bow maker, but this time I'm making my ribbon bunches with the daisy burlap in the center, and I'm going to make four of these. Now that all eight of my ribbon bunches are complete, I'm going to add them onto the wreath. I'm starting with my four clusters with the buffalo check in the center. And all I'm doing is adding one of the bunches by wrapping the two wires on the underneath center supports. Once I have the bow in place, I just fold over the excess wire. To add my second bow, I'm adding it directly across from the first. With those in place, I'm now adding on my next two bows, evenly placing one on the side between the first two. With that in place, I'm adding my next directly across. I'm now attaching my next four ribbon bunches following the same instructions. But because the mesh ruffles will actually be in the center, this time you're going to attach them over the chenille stem instead of attaching them onto the bottom. And once again, I'm just attaching each of the four bows across from each other. Now that I'm done, I'm just working my way around the wreath and giving all the bows a bit of a fluffing. In the center of my wreath, I'm going to be adding on this really cute bumblebee welcome sign. It's from the same site as the mesh and the ribbons, so I'll have that linked below as well. And I just used my scissors to remove its jute hanger. I'm then finding its placement on the center of the wreath. And because this will be permanently on the wreath, I'm just adding some hot glue to the back and attaching it. I'm adding on two large accent bows and I'm using a two and a half inch Harlequin ribbon. I'm also using three one and a half inch ribbons, this pretty yellow and black check, a burlap bee print ribbon, along with a pretty white bumblebee ribbon. And they're all from the same site that I've linked below. I'm once again using my bow maker and I'm making two eight inch tails and two six inch loops with my Harlequin ribbon. I'm now adding on the black and yellow check and I'm matching the eight inch tails, but this time I'm making two five inch loops. I'm adding on my last two ribbons and I'm starting with the burlap bumblebee. Once again, I'm giving both of them eight inch tails, but this time they're each getting three inch loops. After this bow was complete, I then followed the exact same instructions and I made a second. I'm placing my first one on the wreath in the upper left hand corner and I have it attached at an angle. After I attached it in the back, I then fluffed out my ribbons. I then added my second bow in the lower right hand corner and I added this one at an angle as well. After attaching it in place, I then fluffed up the bows. As my final accent, I'm going to be adding on a handful of silk daisies and you can find these at the Dollar Tree, Michaels, or Joann's. And then I simply removed the heads from the stems. Using my glue gun, I attached one in the center of my two large bows. To finish up, I attached the rest of the daisies randomly around the wreath. For some reason, I've had a thing for daisies this year, so you'll probably be noticing them popping up in my videos. I do think, though, that sunflowers would look really pretty on this wreath. And now that I have everything in place, 
my bumblebee welcome wreath is ready to hang. Getting started, I'm going to be using two of these 12 inch love signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm also using one of the wooden seven inch circles from the Dollar Tree and this will become the ladybug's head. Once I remove the label and the hangers, I'm then going to use my black acrylic paint and give them each a coat. Once I have both of my pieces painted and dry, I'm then going to give each of them a coat of Mod Podge. Once both pieces have set up and dried, I'm then going to use my E6000 to attach them together. I placed some on the lower half of the smaller circle. I then decided how large I wanted the head to be and I placed the body on top of it. To make the wings for my ladybug, I'm using the second sign. I found my center point and I cut the sign in half. Now using my white acrylic paint, I'm giving both sides a coat. I'm going to be wrapping the wings and I'm using this ladybug skirt that I found in the toy department at the Dollar Tree. And for the antennae, I'm going to be using this ladybug headband. I need to take the skirt apart, so I'm using my seam ripper and Believe it or not, I have had this since the seventh grade, which was a long time ago. And I'm just removing the waistband and the back seam. Once I was done, I then ironed out my long piece of fabric. With my ladybug wings dry, I'm placing one onto my folded fabric and then I'm cutting out two pieces. I placed one piece of my fabric right side down and then I placed one of the wings on top of it. I ran a line of hot glue along the bottom edge and then folded over my fabric. I added some hot glue to the top and folded over the edge of my fabric. And now I'm adding some glue to the bottom corner folding over the edge of my fabric and then from there I'm just going to work my way around up and over the wing. As I'm adding the hot glue I'm gently pulling against the fabric and attaching it to the back of the wing. After I made my first wing, I then made my second and I tried to match the dots up as closely as possible so when the two wings were put together they looked like a perfect set. Adding the ladybug wings to the body is super easy. I just decided where I wanted them to be. Then using my glue gun, I attached them both into place. Now that the wings are in place, I'm going to add the antennae and I'm simply removing them from the ladybug headband. On the underside of the ladybug's head, I just used my glue gun and I attached them into place. I'm making a bow to cover where the ladybug's wings meet and I'm using one and a half inch ribbon. I'm using some buffalo check ribbon from Michaels and some red and white that I already had on hand. Using my bow maker, I'm starting with the white and I'm making two six inch tails 
and four four inch loops. This time I'm using my buffalo check ribbon. I'm giving myself six inch tails and four three and a half inch loops. I'm finishing off with my red and once again I'm giving myself six inch tails but this time I'm giving myself four three inch loops. When I'm done I'm then securing the whole bow together using a piece of floral wire. I then gave it a quick fluffing and I cut the tails away at an angle. I removed the excess wire and then using my glue gun I attached it to the back of my ladybug. When you're done you can hang it up as is but because this is a wreath collab I'm going to be adding mine to a white flower. To make my white flower I'm starting with the 14 inch wire wreath form from the Dollar Tree. To attach the fabric I'll be using 24 of the white chenille stems. I'm adding two per section and I'm just kind of evenly spacing them and twisting them into place. I'm tightening them as much as possible but I am going to go back and use my glue gun to attach them in place. Now that I'm done and to keep them from moving I'm going to place a dot of hot glue under each of the twists. To add my center chenille stems I'm placing one next to a support and then the next one I'm centering in between the two outside stems. While you're adding them you don't have to be super fussy that they're exactly in place. As long as they're close enough that will do the trick. When I was done I once again used my glue gun to attach those in place as well. It might look a bit scary now that you're done but I promise you it will all disappear. For my flowers petals I'm using three of the white fabric table runners from the Dollar Tree. I removed them from the packaging and they each have two pointed ends. I'm gathering one of the pointed ends about two to three inches and I'm tucking it under the outside wire support. I'm then attaching the fabric by twisting it between two of my chenille stems. I'm now going to tuck the two sides of the fabric under and I'm making a small poof and I'm going to bunch it together about five inches or so and then I'm going to attach it to the next two stems. From there I'm just continuing on making sure that the two sides of the fabric are tucked under and then I'm adding about a five inch poof to the next set of chenille stems. As I'm working my way around the wreath I'm just kind of fluffing up the fabric as I go. When I come to the end of the table runner I'm just going to take the excess fabric and tuck the point under the wreath form. To start my next table runner I'm tucking the pointed end under the last chenille stem. I'm then continuing on making sure that both sides of the fabric are tucked under and attaching it to the next set of chenille stems. Once I've made my way around the wreath I'm going to attach my last poof onto the first set of chenille stems. I still have fabric left so now all I'm doing is moving onward to the inside circle and just following the exact same instructions.
When I'm done and I'm adding on the last table runner, I'm just following the exact same instructions by tucking the end under the wreath form and then just working my way around, adding the poofs to the chenille stems. When I was done, I then tucked all my chenille stems under the wreath form. And to finish, all you need to do is tuck the pointed end under the wreath form. To finish up, I then worked my way around the wreath and I puffed up each of the petals. With my flower complete, I'm going to be adding on my ladybug and I just decided where I wanted to place it. And then using my hot glue gun, I just attached it to the fabric. I'm adding some ribbon accents to my wreath and I'm using this buffalo check ribbon and this polka dot ribbon that came from Michaels along with some red and black ribbon that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I'll be adding on eight bunches, so I cut eight sets of the four ribbons at 10 inches each. Now that I have them all cut, I'm going to be dovetailing the ends of the buffalo check ribbon and the polka dot, and it's super easy. All you do is fold the ribbon in half and then cut away at an angle. To attach my ribbon sets together, I cut four pieces of floral wire in half. I added my buffalo check ribbon, my red ribbon, my polka dot ribbon, and then my black ribbon. I folded them in half to find the center and then attached them together with a piece of floral wire. When I was done, I then had eight bunches of ribbons. I'm attaching the ribbons to the wreath by wrapping the wire around the chenille stem and twisting it underneath. I continued working my way around the wreath until I had them all in place. I'm going to add on a simple flower accent and I'm using these pretty red flowers from the Dollar Tree. I popped nine of them off of the stems and then using my glue gun, I attached one in the center of the bow on the top of my ladybug. I then attached one in the center of all the bows on the wreath. I think this is a riot. We have a wood stove and sometimes in the wood little critters will kind of hatch. And so I never noticed, but if you look to the extreme left of me crafting this wreath, you will see that I had a little visitor. I think it's a stink bug and I never even saw it until right now in my video. To finish up, I used my scissors and I cut the ends of the red and the black ribbons at an angle. I gave them a good fluffing and when I was done, my ladybug on a flower wreath is ready to hang. Getting started, I'm using one of the bumblebee skirts that I found in the toy department at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using the fabric, so using my seam ripper, I'm pulling apart the waistband and then the back seam so I end up with just a long piece of fabric. Once I'm done, I'm ironing the striped fabric flat and then I'm also hanging onto the tool. I'm not using it for this project, but I'll definitely be using it in the future. For the bumblebee's wings and body, I'm using these nine inch wooden hearts that I picked up at Michael's. You can also use the Dollar Tree heart shaped signs and turn them over and just work on the back side. The first thing I'm making is the bumblebee's body. So on one of the hearts, I'm just using my Mod Podge and giving it a good coat. 
When I'm done, I'm then taking the piece of fabric that I had ironed and I'm placing it over the heart, making sure that I'm keeping the stripes nice and straight. Once I have it in place, I'm just using my hands and flattening the fabric out so that it's completely attached to the heart. When I was done, I then flipped it over and using my scissors, I cut away the extra fabric, making sure that I left enough so that I could fold it over and around the heart. I then again used my Mod Podge, added some to the back of the heart, and then I just folded the fabric over tightly and attached it in place. After I did one side, I then did the same for the other. Once I'm done, I'm then placing it to the side and letting it dry completely. For the bumblebee's wings, I'm using my other two hearts and I'm giving each of them a coat of white acrylic paint. After they both have dried, this next step is completely optional. A friend of mine gave me this really pretty black and gold cord and I thought this would be a really nice accent for the outside of the wings. I'm using some of the Aileen's glue that I bought at the Dollar Tree and all I'm going to do is add this around the outside of each heart which are turning into my wings and I'm just going to attach the cord. If you don't have any cord on hand, you could always add on some jute or some nautical rope, even a piece of ribbon. You could paint on an accent or you could just leave it plain and I think that looks great too. With the body and the wings complete, I'm going to make the bumblebee's head and I'm using this six and a half inch wooden circle. I picked this up at Michael's and I'm going to give it a coat of black acrylic paint. Once the head was completely dry, I'm then using some white acrylic paint and I'm taking the end of my paintbrush and I'm just making a circle of dots around the inside outer edge of the head. And once again, this is completely optional. I'm just giving my bumblebee a decorative accent. With all my pieces completely dry, it's now time to put the bumblebee together. I'm adding some hot glue at about the lower third of the bumblebee's head. I'm then placing the top part of the heart on the head, making sure that it's centered. I'm then adding some hot glue at the top of the heart and attaching my wing. I'm following the same instructions for the other side and I'm slightly overlapping the end of the heart. To cover where the wings meet, I'm making a bow with my bow maker. I'm using black and white and yellow and white polka dot ribbon along with a yellow and white stripe ribbon and these all came from Michaels. I had some black ribbon on hand and the burlap ribbon came from the Dollar Tree. My finished bow measures 12 inches in length by six inches and to attach it to my bumblebee, I'm using my hot glue gun and I'm placing some glue in between the two wings. Then it's as simple as placing the bow right in the middle. With the bow in place, I'm now going to add some accents onto the wings. Once again, here comes another completely optional step and you can personalize your bumblebee any way you'd like. I'm using 10 of these flat wooden circles. They're a little bit bigger than an inch and I got them at the Dollar Tree. They came in an assorted wooden piece bag that I showed in one of my past videos and I'm going to end up painting them all black with my black acrylic paint. Once they're dry, I'm finding their placement on the wing and then I'm attaching them in place with my glue gun. To finish up my bumblebee, I'm going to add on some antennae. The Dollar Tree has the matching bumblebee headband with the yellow antennae, but I wanted to use black. 
And this was actually one of the ladybug headbands that the Dollar Tree sells and I used the wings on another project. So I'm just going to cut off the antennae and add them to the top of my bumblebee. With the bumblebee complete, it looks so cute and you can hang it as is, but I'm going to be adding mine onto a wreath. To make my wreath, I'm using one of the 14 inch wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. I'm adding my bee to the form at an angle and I'm covering about two and a half sections. Once I have it in place, I'm using my E6000 to attach it permanently. And once I've added the glue, I'm then letting it set up overnight. To make the base for the wreath, I'm using one roll each of black, white, and yellow gold mesh that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. To make the mesh easier to cut into my six inch pieces, I cut a six inch piece of cardstock. I then placed the end of my mesh against the end of the cardstock and I just wrapped it around until the roll was empty. I then cut the mesh at both ends and it's a quick and easy way to get your mesh ready to roll. I then followed the same instructions for the white and the yellow gold. With all my pieces cut, I'm going to be attaching the curls together using some chenille stems that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I'm using these gold ones, but any color that you have on hand will work just as well. Before I start rolling my curls, I'm cutting a bunch of the stems in half. To roll my curls, I'm taking one of the six inch pieces of mesh and it doesn't matter what color you use or start with, and I'm just rolling it into itself. Once I have the curl, I like to stick it between my finger to keep it from unraveling. And then I'm just heading on and doing the exact same thing for my next piece of white. To finish up, I'm rolling a black piece of mesh and then taking one of the half chenille stems. I'm just wrapping it over the top of all three and twisting it tightly together. After my first set is complete, I then continue on until I finish all of my cut mesh. I ended up using one roll of each color, but depending on how loosely or how tightly you add them to the wreath form, you may end up needing a little more or a little less. When you're done, you'll have this really pretty bouquet of mesh curls. Adding the mesh curls to the wreath form is super easy. All you need to do is take each end of the chenille stems and wrap them around the two center supports. Then twist them both tightly into place and then I just fold over the excess underneath. After my first one was attached, I just continued adding them on until I filled out my wreath. With my wreath complete, I'm going to add on this cute tin happy sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. I'm using my white acrylic paint and I'm giving it two coats. Once it's completely dry and to help keep the finish because sometimes it can scratch off, I like to give mine a coat of Mod Podge. Once it's dry, I'm going to give it a flower accent by using a sprig off of this Dollar Tree stem. There are only two on here because I used the others in a past project, but I'm going to use both of these on my wreath. After I pulled off a sprig, I then snipped all the little flowers off. There are two hanger holes at the top, so using my glue gun, I attached a flower over each of those. When I was done, I then attached three more flowers just to give my sign a little accent. With my happy sign complete, I'm going to add some hot glue to the back and attach it to the wreath. I'm adding a ribbon accent on the side of my wreath and I'm using all the same ribbons that I used in the bow. I cut a 12 inch strip out of all five of my ribbons. When I 
was done, I then dovetailed each of their ends, and this is super easy. All you do is fold the ribbon in half, and then cut away at an angle. Once all my ribbons are dovetailed, I then place one on top of the other in no specific order. I fold them in half to find my center, and then I secure them together with a chenille stem. I gave them a good fluffing, and then I centered them between the bee and the happy sign. I wrapped the chenille stems around the two center supports, and then I just attached them in place. To finish up, I'm going to add in some white hydrangeas and that little sprig of yellow flowers, and these all came from the Dollar Tree. I snipped off two of the white hydrangeas along with the yellow flowers, and I'm just hot gluing one of the white bunches in the center of my ribbon cluster. I added some hot glue on the stem of my yellow flowers and then popped them right in the center of the white hydrangeas. I then added my last bunch of flowers next to the H. And with that, my Bumble Bee Happy Wreath is ready to hang. To make the floral wreath, I'm starting with one of the 9.8 inch styrofoam wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. To make my hanger, I'm using some of this pink Dollar Tree sheer ribbon, and I cut a piece about 24 inches in length. I'm taking one end of the ribbon and I'm just wrapping it around the form, and I'm tying it into a knot. Now you'll probably see a whole bunch of teeth marks and that's because before I started my little dog decided to take off with the form and I had to go get it back. I'm now taking the other end of the ribbon and I'm attaching that as well. I snipped off the excess ribbon ends and now I have the wreaths hanger. I'm using the end of a paintbrush and I'm making eight holes evenly around the form. I'm making one hole on the top, and then the second directly below it, then one on the side, and directly across on the other side. I'm then evenly spacing my last four holes, one across from the other. With this complete, I'm going to be adding on the heads of eight large flowers. Now these I had on hand, but you can definitely find large flowers at the Dollar Tree. I removed four of the pink and four of the white flowers from their stems. I added a dot of hot glue onto the holes and then simply just slipped the end of the flower in. I made sure to alternate the pink and the white and I just worked my way around the form. At this point, your wreath is complete, and this next step is completely optional. I'm adding in some greenery, and I'm using eight leftover leaves that I had from past projects. I'm making sure to use a finger protector. I found mine at the Dollar Tree, and I'm simply adding in a dot of hot glue between each flower, and then placing in my leaves. I used eight larger flowers to make my wreath, but you can always add in some smaller ones. And once all my leaves were in place, my five minute floral wreath is ready to hang. Here 
we are at the end of the video and I really hope you enjoyed making these spring and Easter wreaths with me. If you're new to my channel and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to come back and hang out with her again, don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below. If you're looking for more spring and Easter decor ideas, I'll leave some playlists for you at the end of this video. I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you soon. Bye everybody!